Hello and good day. This is the Bible Bard. A bard is a storyteller who recites traditional texts associated with a particular oral tradition, and I'm here to recite and to amplify what the literature of the Bible says about who is God and who are human beings. Here's the place we are at today. In our last podcast, we heard that God lives everywhere at the same time. In this week's reading, we hear that God has unlimited power. He's omnipotent. Listen to what the Bible says about this idea. In Psalm 66, verse 7, the text states, quote, He rules forever by his power, unquote. In Psalm 47, verse 5, the text says, quote, Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Unquote. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 11 and 12, the text reads, quote, These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding, unquote. If we go over to the New Testament, to the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 36, Jesus is praying, and during his prayer, he says the following, quote, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you, unquote. And finally, in the last book of the Bible, Revelation 19, verse 6, the writer says, quote, I heard, as it were, the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, unquote. Up to this point, the Bible Bard has enumerated three great, unique abilities of God as stated in the Bible. God knows everything. He is present everywhere at the same time. And in today's lesson, he has unlimited power. These attributes form the basis of the unique abilities of the Bible's God. God has many other attributes and abilities, but these three are very special for they set this God, the Bible's God, apart from all others. At this point, I'd like to provide three illustrations of God's power. Number one, God is first, his power is seen in his creative abilities. In Genesis 1.1, the text reads, quote, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, unquote. And then in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, the text states, quote, Since what may be known about God is plain to people, or them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, unquote, meaning being understood by human beings. Number two, God's power is seen in his dealings with ancient Israel. We don't have the time, of course, to retell the entire story of the Hebrew patriarchs, the extended family's trip to Egypt, their national enslavement while they're there by the Egyptians, and then their national deliverance, leaving Egypt after 400 years under Egyptian domination. The power of God is displayed in the miracles Moses wrought to obtain that national freedom. And the story is told in the book of Exodus. You can read the book for yourself. Some listeners might have even seen the 1960 movie called Exodus, directed by Otto Preminger, which is based upon the 1958 novel written by Leon Urges called Exodus. The story is told in the Bible uh, better than either the book or the movie. Number three, God's power is seen in the New Testament because the most important event in the New Testament is the death, burial, and then resurrection of Jesus. And about that, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, quote, I want to know the power of his resurrection, unquote. And then the Apostle Peter uh, agrees in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where he states, quote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he, God, has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of 
Jesus Christ from the dead, unquote. Now, we know the motifs of death and resurrection flood our popular literature. As with zombies, vampires, movies, TV series, too many here to list. Jesus' resurrection, however, is unique in human history. This exercise of power attributed to God is highly controversial. The idea of God's creation, of intelligent design even in the organization of the universe, the idea of miracles where the normal process of natural cause and effect is overturned for a time, the idea that someone could be publicly killed and entombed and then after three days come back to life. These things have been argued about for thousands of years. The Bible bar doesn't care. We focus on what the Bible says about these subjects. I'm not even arguing that these events actually happened or are true. Instead, I'm simply sharing that this is what the Bible says, which actually is the reason why the Bible is the best-selling book in publication history. This is the way the Bible Bard works. Brief recitations, closely focused, no distractions, no rabbit trails. Send the Bible Bard any questions or remarks you care to offer to BibleBardUS at gmail.com. Glad to hear from you. Thanks in advance for following and sharing content from the Bible Bard community. Thanks for listening.